Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Justin Guzzi. I'm a director in our cloud and digital AWS practice at PWC, also one of our AWS ambassadors. Today, I'm very excited to have uh, one of our customers with us today, ISO New England. You know, we're here at reInvent 2023. This is the 12th annual reInvent. Very exciting, lots of energy. Uh, I think upwards of 60,000 people this year. So a great, great being here again. Um, lots of great service announcements, feature releases, um, lots of Gen AI. Um, no, no surprise there, but lots of great innovation in the Gen AI space. With me today is uh, James Davin Flatten uh, and Suresh Jati. And uh, guys, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what ISO New England does and in, in your roles in the organization? Okay, thank you, Justin. Um, uh, I, we work for a company called ISO New England. We're based in Western Massachusetts. We're an independent system operator. We primarily do three things. We manage the uh, reliability of the electricity grid for the New England. We manage the wholesale energy market. Uh, that's the deregulated market in the New England. And also we make sure that we provide the planning function for the short term and long term uh, planning so that we, can have, we have forecast the right amount of power that need for the future demand that's going to uh, that's going to come into the place. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the primary function. Uh, I'm uh, uh, working in IT. I'm one of the directors for enterprise architecture and an application development. Over to you, Darren. <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Davin Flatten. Uh, I'm the uh, manager of digital transformation at ISO New England. I've been at the company for 15 years. I spent most of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, time at the beginning in the infrastructure and operations field. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a pretty traditional uh, organization for many years, uh, running all of our services on-premise, mm -hmm. uh, very traditional data center operations. Um, I've just recently moved from that role into the digital transformation uh, area as a new function in our company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm basically responsible for trying to accelerate our adoption of emerging technologies, cloud being uh, yeah. being one of them. So uh, I spend my days trying to uh, champion and uh, encourage everyone to, uh, uh, to to think a little bit uh, differently about how we uh, solve our problems day to day. Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that intro. Um, I guess before we get into a little bit about your cloud transformation journey over the last couple of years, I'm just curious, you know, with all the excitement around Gen AI and everything that's going on at, at um, reInvent this year, what have you guys come across in terms of maybe sessions or maybe new things you've learned? Anything interesting that um, you know you're you're getting really excited about? Well, so yeah, I've been focusing. Uh, you know, as we started to adopt cloud in our organization, um, uh, our vice president of IT, you know, uh, gave me a mandate saying, "Please do not uh, break the bank." <laughs> so uh, I've been focusing a lot uh, here at AWS, looking at uh, financial operations and ways to optimize our cost. Okay. Um, in general, uh, at, at reInvent, what I like about it is you just there's so many services mm -hmm. that uh, that that AWS has, and you just, it's almost impossible to be aware of all of them. Mm -hmm. So at reInvent, you get exposed to that broad, you know, just all over uh, experience there, and it really generates a lot of new ideas mm -hmm. and, and makes you think differently about ways you can solve problems that you might be having in your day to day. That's awesome. What about you, Suresh? Um, uh, I think one thing you talked about, Justin, is the Gen AI. Obviously, that's the kind of a thing everybody gets excited yeah, about. Yeah. Right? But it can go so many different ways. But if, mm -hmm. it, if you use it at the right place, you can get a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you can use it at the wrong place, whereas mm -hmm. it's not always deterministic. It can give you the answer that could be misleading. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a certain use cases where like you want to get an insight into mm -hmm. some of the reports, and uh, it can crawl through a lot of data. Mm -hmm. and provide the insight with the, uh, uh, that saves you a lot of time, saving a lot of manual work. You can yeah. go through the, all the reports and then it, it can give you the references to the actual source data it has used. Mm -hmm. So that's been a, one of the things I've been excited about. Yep. The other thing, uh, the true to the foundational advantage of cloud services, I've been seeing so many uh, new features and the serverless architecture is where I see a lot of advancements happening. See, yeah, so yeah. The capabilities in a lot of the serverless uh, uh, services that are available in AWS mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that actually, I think I'm a lot more excited about them yeah. uh, because of uh, not just the capabilities of what it can do, mm -hmm. it can be uh, operationally, it saves so much time in the future yeah. because where yeah. we don't have to yeah maintain the underlying arc, uh, 
software, hardware, patching, and everything. It's mm-hmm. just it's Amazon is taking care of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So those are two areas I'm re- really excited about it. As mm-hmm. Davin mentioned, there's, there sometimes this overwhelming number of services. Yeah. <laughs> Trink, Trink is figuring out what services yeah. match your needs. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I heard three themes there, right? Is um, cost optimization, FinOps, um, cloud native architectures and gen AI. Okay. Um, and these are, you know, three pretty important things as it relates to cloud. Um, so, you know, with that, let's get a little bit into your cloud transformation strategy, right? Um, can you maybe provide a little bit of insight into your strategy, maybe how it's driving uh, some of your business decisions for moving to cloud? Uh, good, good. Uh, so I think we want to start, we've been a traditional organization mm-hmm. more in the uh, space where we are responsible for maintaining the power grid. So there's right. always a, the reliability and the security is primary reasons uh, our industry as a whole has been somewhat slow to adopt the cloud mm-hmm. architecture because I think we want to see it mature, yeah. we address some of the concerns of the reliability. Uh, so, uh, But good thing is, I think... Uh, with being a late starter, we're able to use a much more mature cloud platform in yeah. so many different layers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we kind of started early with the classic use case of where the elastic nature of the cloud, where mm-hmm. we were trying to focus a lot of our uh, transmission case studies and simulations we do uh, using a high performance computing. The, yeah. uh, computing. Yeah. So that's been the primary focus. We got a lot of value out of it. Mm-hmm. And now we are fo- shifting our focus more into our traditional applications, which mm-hmm. are supporting our core business. Yep. Uh, and uh, so we started with our uh, uh, public data mart and all mm-hmm. associated applications. That's a big workload that went live this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we're uh, then getting into our core market applications next year, next few years, that would be our focus uh, mm-hmm. and uh, moving to the cloud. Like I think we're really excited about, we can focus more on what we can do to address our where the market is going, more more importantly, our where our what our participants, our customer needs are, uh, and focusing on delivering those functionalities. So that's what mm-hmm. we're going to be focusing on. Yeah, some some really great use cases there, and it sounds like you guys have a lot of momentum behind your strategy of where you want to go. I I know over the last couple of years, you know, we've worked very closely with you uh, to really help you. Uh, enhance or evolve that journey quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the power of PwC behind you, you've had the power of AWS behind you, mm-hmm. um, a, a great collaboration between all of us. Um, so, you know, with that, how has that, would you say, enabled you uh, along this journey? Um, yeah, no, I, I think uh, it's definitely enabled us a lot. <laughs> um, you know, we started out uh, our cloud our, our cloud transformation journey with building uh, you know, a control tower yeah. implementation with PwC and really getting out of in front of some of the core capabilities that mm-hmm. need to be in place day one yep. to really b- make sure that when you start to move your production workloads out there, mm-hmm. uh, it's secure, it's managed, and, yep. and, and, and it works the way you intend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think engaging in that with PwC mm-hmm. uh, was a great uh, exercise that, you know, helped us understand exactly all the components we needed to get into place. Mm-hmm. And as well, we were able to work together with you to, to mm-hmm. sort of customize that environment yeah. so that it fit you know, what we do and it, it made, made sense for what our company right. uh, does on a day-to-day basis. Right, right. And I know, like I said, AWS has been along, along the journey there too, the critical player you guys have, You're working with some great folks over at AWS too. So. Um, I know that's probably helped you out as, along as well, and mm-hmm. um, even from the architecture perspective and some of your strategies as well, too, as I said, sort of like that trifecta, right? So that's great. You're doing all the right things to make sure that you're enabling yourselves along the way. What are some of the challenges that you maybe you've had uh, or tips that you can share of things that you came across on this journey that maybe you could share with, with uh, other organizations out there, or maybe some gotchas, lessons learned, things along those lines? I can get started. Yeah. I, I think uh, we all know it's an a cliche thing to say everybody's journey is different. Okay? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a finding that right um, match of uh, uh, pain points we currently may have mm-hmm. and with what capabilities it provides. Mm-hmm. And uh, using that, come up with a plan that you can c- communicate. You can first find the value, where it provides yeah. value to the organization. 
and uh, come up with a plan that you can communicate to various stakeholders in the company because yeah. it's not it should never be just an IT only journey it should be really you yeah. know, working with the business uh, stakeholders along the way mm-hmm. so lot but a lot of times business do not understand or do not care about what's the cloud mm-hmm. okay they just mm-hmm. want uh, um, their applications to be working their yeah. business needs are met right. so it's really uh, often it's easy to IT to get ahead of ourselves and saying that oh this is what we want to do this is it. and but mm-hmm. we don't always do a good job in communicating why okay right. and this is where I think the uh, value for some companies could be maybe just a cost savings could be one but yeah. for a different company it could be there are some capabilities that are only available in the cloud which you don't have yeah okay yeah, um, or, or the skill set where uh, you do not have certain skill set internally to mm-hmm. manage some of these things so you find what's kind of what's the right fit for you mm-hmm. and focus on those and and mm-hmm. a lot of this this is a long journey yeah. always find those uh, quick value, you start showing the value, yeah. incremental, mm-hmm. just come up, find a project or initiative where you can immediately start seeing the value because mm-hmm. it's, uh, you need to kind of, kind of really get a touch and feel of what, where this is. Mm-hmm. And then you get a buy-in and you can then, you can you can have a much more successful journey. Mm-hmm. You can come up with a long-term roadmap. Now there's be review that roadmap at like uh, on a regular basis to revise it that fits your needs. Yeah, yeah, I, and I think that's, and you hit a couple important points there too, is bridging business with technology. You know, you're solving business problems with technology. It is a collaborative effort, right? You, you have to make sure that everyone is involved along the way. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be challenging, right? Yeah, Devin, anything that maybe yeah, you wanted well, to share? I like what Suresh was saying, because yeah. one of the challenges that, that I've run into multiple times is, is that uh, especially in IT, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, yeah. <laughs> or you don't know the benefit until yeah. you see it. So yeah. uh, the idea of doing, you know, quick, uh, quick wins, small projects, being mm-hmm. able to show the company the value of the cloud starts to turn that light bulb on yep. for a lot of people in the organization, and just makes that adoption that much easier. Yeah, um, I think some of the challenges that we saw along what you were saying, uh, what Shresh was saying, is we definitely saw. Um, organizational challenges as well because you know operating in the cloud is a different IT operating model Agree, yeah. uh, from the ground up uh, and so you know our traditional uh, IT organization had some areas mm-hmm. there where it didn't really mesh very well uh, with operating the cloud so we've been working to um, you know change our organization structure yeah. somewhat to better support that yeah. and I think that also helps you know close some of those skill gaps uh, that you can have uh, um, as you try to move to the cloud. Yeah, great. That's some really great insight. Thanks for sharing that, guys. Um, I guess last question, really. Uh, so you guys are, are, I would say, moving quickly to the cloud and you're thinking ahead clearly. Um, what does maybe 2024 or the next few years look like as far as uh, your, your journey and where you're, where you're going to be going? Um, I think as we talked earlier, I think we after we moved some of our high performance high performance computing and our public data warehouse into the cloud, we're getting into the more core our market applications, mm-hmm. core business applications. Uh, that's going to be the focus. And along the way, we will, uh, what we want to do it is find the initiatives or projects that will set up well for accelerating this journey because you need to find the combination because I think uh, at the, uh, not just uh, 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 some applications where you just move in along the way, find the right fit where we really can uh, increase our skill set or mm-hmm. other things you need that can have a multiplier effect. That's the mm-hmm. key. I think I believe is our focus would be finding the right mix of the initial projects uh, that sets up, uh, sets up as up well into accelerating this journey into the future. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Also bringing, I think, other uh, parts of our IT organization into cloud operations. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. Uh, every IT group that we have been introduced to has worked on a cloud project, mm-hmm. um, has just taken to it, you know, like a fish to water and they That's love great. it. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm expecting that in, in, the, in 2024, we're gonna bring more of those groups on yeah. and they're gonna get excited about it as well and just yeah. sort of build that momentum. Yeah. 
Well, that's a great a great story, guys. And thank you so much for sharing and taking the time talking tonight. Suresh Dabin, uh, really ex very excited to continue to work with you guys. And um, we're you know looking forward to, to keeping the momentum going. So thanks again for coming along and, and uh, letting me interview you uh, oh, yeah, around no this. Th uh, thank you, Justin. Awesome. We had a uh, last few years had been a really fruitful journey with you mm -hmm. guys. And I'm looking forward to working with you guys on many more uh, projects in the future. Yeah. Right. Thanks again. Thank Thanks. you.